Hi, I'm Jeff Cogswell. Today at Go Parallel, we're going to look at how to generate different types of code in Visual Studio based on the processor that you're targeting. Uh, for example, the advanced uh, vector instruction sets or an earlier version. Uh, let's take a look at the options here. And then what we're going to do is generate the code and then look at the assembly code. And then next time, we're going to actually go into that assembly code and see exactly what we're getting in terms of optimization. So open up your properties for your project and go to all options. I, I find that all options is a little easier to find everything I need. There are three options that we can set. Uh, the one we want this time is right here, Intel Processor Specific Optimization. Now what this one does is it generates code, assembly code, that targets a certain processor on up. If you're running a processor lower than that, when you run the executable, uh, you'll get a message saying that, that the, this architecture is not supported by your processor. And that's what we're going to test out right here. Then we'll look at the two other options for configuring this. So let's set this one to something really high up. This processor I'm using does not handle uh, the advanced vector extensions 512. So let's do that one and click OK. Now I've got some vectorized loops and instructions in here in this uh, sample C++ code. And we'll do a full rebuild. Okay, now let's try and run this and see what happens. Okay, I'm in the directory for the release and I, there's my executable. Now when I run it, I was able to generate the code for the uh, AVX512. But when I run it, I get a message, please verify that both the operating system and the processor support Intel and there's a list of instructions and AVX 512 CD instructions. So that's what happens. If we run this on a processor that actually supports those instructions, then it will run. Now that might not be what you want every time. You might want instead to get some code that will run as a default code. So let's look at a setting for that. Once again, we'll go to our properties. And we'll go back down and let's turn off this option that we just turned on. Let's put it back to none. Now the one we want this time is way up at the top here. Add processor optimized code path. So let's do that one. Now let's once again target a five, uh, AVX 512. And this time we'll rebuild and run it and we'll see that it will actually run. Okay, let's try it again. And this time it ran. We see our A and our B, which are output from inside this program here. Now, the third option we can look at, let's turn this one back off. And let's go to Enable Enhanced Instruction Set right here. Now, this one doesn't have all the options available inside Visual Studio, but we can get to those through the command line. Uh, but we'll go ahead and target AVX. Now what happens here is when we rebuild this, we now we end up with an executable that's very much like the one, the very first one we did. It doesn't have a default code path. Instead, it only has the code for that processor. But it it doesn't actually check in advance before trying to run the code. So what that means is if we run this code on a processor that does not support AVX in this case, uh, it will probably just crash. It'll encounter illegal instructions that it doesn't recognize. So when would you use that one? Well, in, you would use that one if you are if you know for a fact your code, your final executable, will only be run on certain machines. If you know that those machines meet those requirements, then you're fine. And that's basically those three settings. Uh, next time, what we're going to do is look at one of these, uh, the one that generates uh, more than one code path. And we're going to go in there and look at the actual assembly code. And we're going to look at the code path for when there's not that processor. And we're going to see if it's vectorized or not. And then we'll look at the code for the actual processor and see if just how optimal that one is. So we'll see you next time.